George Bassett's office. No, I'm terribly sorry. He's not here at the moment. Can I give him a message? Uncle who? Oh, Mr. Bassett's just come in. Good morning, Mr. Bassett. Morning, Rachel. <laughs> it's your Uncle Jim. Uncle Jim from New Zealand. He didn't state his residence, just his relationship. <laughs> I'm putting you through now. Hello? Georgie! Uncle Jim! <laughs> I bet that shook you. Yes, it did a bit. I didn't know you were in England. Where are you uh, staying? The Caravelle, not very far from you, I reckon. No, not far at all. Well, I thought I'd have a last look round the old world, bore the pants off me relatives. Ah, you've never done that, Uncle Jim. Well, it's nice of you to say so. You know, life's been pretty dull since your Aunt Peg died. Yes. Yeah, I know. I'm, I was sorry to hear about that, Uncle. Well, we had a good life. 52 years together. Well, now, I mustn't keep you from your work. You're a big wheel now, I expect, eh? Well, fairly big, yes. Well, now, what about having lunch with me today? Lunch today? Yes, I could manage that. That'd be fine, Uncle. Good. Well, what about that place we went to on, on my last trip? You know, lovely food. You recommended it. What, a silver tower? That's it. One o'clock. And we'll have a lovely old chinwag, eh? Well, I'll see you there, then, George. Cheery bye. Poor old Uncle Jim. He doesn't know about the divorce yet. I'm going to have to break that over lunch. Wish he hadn't suggested the Silver Towers, though. For lunch? Lovely. Yeah, but it was one of Susie's favourite places. Oh, to hell with it. If it brings back memories, I'll just picture this morning. Gibbering with rage on the doorstep. <laughs> Listen, I won't have time for any shopping, Liz. Would you mind? Don't mind at all. What do you want? Two bottles of milk and a back bumper. <laughs> Well, cheers. Cheers, Uncle. You haven't changed a bit, George, you know that? Younger than when I saw you last. Do you remember I told you that uh, marriage would suit you? Yes. Well, you've got a lovely young bride in Susie. Girl of spirit, Peg always used to say. Oh, she's got plenty of spirit, yes. Yes. <laughs> well, when am I going to see her? Well, actually, Uncle You see, Jim... I've made a bit of money in my time, and what I always feel is... Why leave it after you've gone to your friends and relatives? Why not distribute it now amongst people that matter, like you and Susie? Yeah, well, actually, Uncle Jim, it... Uh, well, so, is... if you'd like to tell your young wife and ask her to get me a meal sometime one evening, I'll come over and give you my plans for you two. Now, how about that, eh? Yes. Tonight yeah. it suit me very well, as a matter of fact. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, the tr trouble is, Uncle, we do, we do live on... Um... You know, a fair distance out. A fair and, distance. Mm. Now, what's that? Ten miles? Twenty miles? Yeah. I come from New Zealand, George. We go a hundred miles to a party. Distance <laughs> means nothing to me. <laughs> no, well, well, it's not It's not just the distance. I mean, the, the roads out there are, are, are pretty rough, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Tarring them, as a matter of fact. Tarring them? Mm. What's up, George? You trying to... Stop the old uncle from coming? No, of course I'm not, uncle. No, it's, it's just that I've got to tell you. Well, but... right, right. Now, say no more. As long as I'm welcome. Now, listen, Dad. What I wanted to tell you was, in the dark days when poor old Peggy passed away, one of the things that kept me going was the fact that you and Susie were enjoying the same sort of marriage as we had always enjoyed. And that wonderful time you gave us on our last visit here. I'll never forget that. I've been looking forward to a repeat performance of that all the way over. And, uh, oh, but there I go, nattering on. You wanted to say something, George? No, no, n nothing, Uncle. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, that's enough from me. Now, what about you two? Any babies on the way? No. You sound very sure. Well, well I'm uh, fa fairly sure, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, don't leave it too late, George. You'll be too old to enjoy a good booze up at their weddings, eh? <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, well, um, that's, that's, that's awfully good here. Grapefruit cocktail? <laughs> <laughs> it's hardly a restaurant rarity. No, it's just that I, you know, quite like grapefruit cocktail. So you're going to have it? No, I think I'll have the white bait, please. <laughs> <laughs> Anything wrong, George? No, I was just a bit, bit worried. I forgot to tell my secretary where I was. I'll... Give her a call, if, if you'll... Excuse me, Uncle. The telephone's over there, sir. Yes, yes, I know. I just, I just want to go to the lavatory first. <laughs> <laughs> You'd hardly believe it, but uh, his mother was perfectly normal. <laughs> <laughs> I thought we agreed that this 
was going to be my restaurant. I'm, uh, I'm having lunch with Uncle Jim. Oh, he... congratulations. Did you get me all the way over here to tell me he, that? He doesn't, he doesn't know where, uh, we're split up. He thinks we're still sharing the same bed. And, uh, I, I tried to tell him all through the lunch. He, he won't, he won't listen. Now, you... It's going to break his heart if he finds out. Well, there's no reason for him to find out. He's giving you lunch. He doesn't have to meet me. Yes, he does. Why? He's coming for dinner with us tonight. I beg He you... invited him. I couldn't put him off. Now, you're going to have to help me, Susie. George, just give me one good reason why I should. Well, he, um, he'd like to leave us some money. Oh, that's very kind of him, but he looks good for a few years yet. No, now, you see, he wants, he wants people to enjoy his money while he's still alive. What do you suggest? I'm not going back to the same bed with you, even for money. <laughs> Look, we, we, we might be able to afford not to have to live next door to each other. It's not, it's not the same bed, it's just, just the same table. Just cook him a meal tonight. Uh, you know, pretend we're still married, you'll never know the difference, and, and uh, try not to break any plates over my head. Sure, I didn't really want to... <laughs> <laughs> Again, please. I'm sorry, sorry. That. You're gonna help me or not? Well, well, just give him a meal. Just just give him a meal, that's right. At your place. At my place. And then when he goes. It's back to your place. Well, you, you go back to your place. Quite. And you're gonna uh gonna have to join us for lunch. Why? He's seen us. <laughs> Keep smiling, eh? <laughs> just just say I have to come here and uh, you just happen to be passing, all right? George, I'd like to kick yes, you in the sorry. teeth, all right? <laughs> Who's here? Oh, Susan. Hello, Uncle Jim. Oh, lovely. <laughs> Sit down, my dear. Oh, darling. <laughs> she, uh, I, I just, just happened to be passing. Ha happened to be passing, yes. Thank you. Susie? Your soup. Oh, hello, Jack. How are you? Nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, was this really just a coincidence? Yes. Well, I must fill you in. I don't suppose you've had a chance to talk to George yet. No, no. Well, I was saying I'm on my last trip round the... <laughs> Mrs Bassett hasn't ordered yet. I beg your pardon, sir, but she has. Uh, uh, mushroom soup followed by scampi Provencal. Uh, well, yeah, I think I can explain. Can you? Yes. Well, when I lunch here, I, um, I always have the same thing. Thank you very much. That was most thoughtful. <laughs> Well, now, you, you were saying about the uh, Van der Waal trip, Uncle. What? Oh, yes, well... Now, Uncle, I... before you utter another word, mm -hmm. I insist that you have dinner with us tonight. Oh, well, now, isn't that funny? Do you know, I was just saying to George... Yeah, is, is that funny? What? How funny! <laughs> <laughs> well, I understand that the young man's mother was quite normal. <laughs> Got any pots and pans? I've got pot. Of course, I've got pots and pans. There we are. He was had to cook my <laughs> breakfast egg in the morning. Well, I've been boiled away so many times it looks like a rocket launching pad. <laughs> Don't you ever cook yourself anything in the evening? Yeah, well, well, but I use the same pan. I mean, that's all you need for heating tins up, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> tins? Well, I don't. I mean, special nights, I grill myself something. Oh, chops and steaks and things. No, fish fingers or hamburgers. <laughs> and they've got the marvellous frozen stuff. You know, a complete meal on a tray for one. They're awfully good. Well, I don't think that a diet of tinned and frozen food's a very good idea. Oh, I, I keep pretty fit. Well, you won't if you keep it up. Why don't you buy yourself a nice piece of steak and some fresh... Greens. <laughs> yes, I will, thanks. Thanks a lot, Susie. Right, well, let's get on. Yeah, well, there's not much I can do, is there? Yes, there is. You can do the potatoes. Thanks a lot. Oh, and uh, put a pan of water on, will you? Right. What's, uh, what's on the menu, then? Well, I thought we'd start with some pâté. Oh, super. Mm, there's a very good delicatessen in the village, did you know? No, no, I didn't. Well, I'll show it to you sometime. Yeah, I do. I, I love a good pâté. And then I'm going to give you something that you don't get very often. Oh, really? <laughs> Chicken minced up with mushrooms. Well, that's a good second, isn't it? <laughs> And I'll sauté the potatoes, yeah. and we're going to have a green salad on the side. Oh, marvellous. Hey, what about pudding, then? Well, I saw some lovely prunes. Oh, really? <laughs> but I decided on crepe Suzette. Oh, darling. Yeah, well, uh, better let me know how much it all is. Well, I haven't worked it out yet. No, when you do. Right. Right. 
<laughs> I mean, what's that? What's that funny smell? Forgot to put any water in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> Did you burn yourself? Just a touch here. Yeah. <laughs> it's perfectly all Please, right. George. You'd better go and put something. Really, there's nothing wrong with it George, at all. George, will, will you just go upstairs to the bathroom cabinet and? Uh, yeah, well, 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 wherever you keep your things. Well, not in the bathroom cabinet. No. Because you had that, didn't you? <laughs> yes. Well, wherever. Nowhere, actually. Oh, well, look, I'll put some butter on it then. Mm. George, don't you have any medical stuff in the house? Oh, of course I do. I've got, I've got the, um, the aspirins for hang hangovers in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about? Well, I don't know. Iodine bandages and disinfectant. Ah, oh, that's not weird. You have to get those from chemists, don't you? And, uh, you know, I don't go into a chemist as often as I used to. <laughs> Fancy a drink? Oh, please. How's it coming? Oh, fine. There's nothing else I can do until he arrives. Oh, good. We can have our snifters sitting down there. Oh, poor old thing. Right, well, it was, that, it was that lunch. Anything more than beer and bangers, and I'm finished. Yes, I remember. Cheers. Cheers. This takes me back a bit, you know. It reminds me of our dinner dues in the old days. Mm. You might call them the good old days. I might. Thank you. Some of them. Mm. <laughs> Do you remember watching the clock, wondering who'd arrive first? It was always... Peter and Mary. Peter and Mary, yeah. <laughs> Oh, so sorry. Don't say we're fast again. <laughs> you once told them to go and wait in the pub. I did. You did. You said we hadn't changed. Well, we hadn't, had we? <laughs> That'll teach them, you said. They won't be first again. No, they weren't. No, next time they were early. <laughs> the were, were dinner dinners. We didn't have time to sit down. Mm -hmm. You remember when, when uh, I, I'd come in late or you'd burnt something? Burnt something. Yeah. Remember that time we were changing in the evening and you, and you said, I thought you'd given up cigarettes. And I said, it's not me that's smoking, it's the kitchen. <laughs> <laughs> then everybody arrived on the dot and you were busy scraping the charcoal off the meat and I was getting, <laughs> getting them sludged so they wouldn't notice. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, it wasn't all that funny at the time, I know. It's not all that funny now. <laughs> hysterical. We, fi we finished up with a piece of meat no bigger than your hand. There wasn't enough for two of us. Everybody sat behind a plate of two veg and lumpy gravy. <laughs> gravy was not lumpy. Oh, no, no, I'm not saying you haven't improved, darling. Oh, I mean, that, uh, that recipe book I bought you for Christmas once helped you. No, it's just that in the old days, the, uh, the sauces and gravies had a rather interesting assortment of flowery balls. But you never fail to point out to our guests. Oh, I'm sure I never oh, mentioned no, it, that. it was the great joke of the evening. Try and leave the flowery balls on the edge of your plates as Susie likes to mix them up with water for her wallpaper. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, it's not funny. And what was your contribution to the evening? Getting sloshed before the pudding and then telling jokes that you couldn't remember the end of. <laughs> just, just trying to keep things going. That's, I mean, you know, things tended to go rather flat after, after your burnt offering. Man cannot live by lumpy gravy alone, you know. <laughs> George, you mentioned my lumpy gravy once more. Sorry, that was cos cos. It wasn't lumpy, darling. I mean, I, I mean on, on the rare occasion, it, it was lumpy. It, it had a marvellous consistency. <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd like to apologise about that from the bottom of my heart. But what? A bit about the paper hanging. And also about getting smashed before the sweet. It won't happen tonight, I promise you. A reformed character, are you? Well, there's nobody around to upset, is there? Um, salad dressing. Pardon? Yeah, I, I left it next door. I'll just go and get it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have a drink, wait, for when you come back then. Lovely. <laughs> Susie! Uncle Jim! <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could have sworn George said number two cops cottages. He did. What? I mean... Well, where is he? I could do with a reviver. Uh, he's next... He, he went for a walk, the, um, country air, you know. I'll, 
I'll get him. No, no, leave him, leave him. I've no objection to being left alone with a pretty girl, even at my age. <laughs> would, would you like a drink, Uncle Jim? I love one, Susie. Scotch, if I may. Scotch? That's right, with water, 50-50, lovely. We have a very nice wine. Wine? <laughs> oh, George went to get the drink. That's right, that's what he went for. I'll, I'll just go and see oh, if he's... Darling, your drinks you're getting. Ah, <laughs> Susie. <laughs> Susie just told me we're getting the drinks. <laughs> <laughs> well, what are you going to do, then? Go to and fro from the pub all the evening the glasses? <laughs> Where's the booze? Outside? <laughs> Does he think we live in here? But all the food's next door. <laughs> Not a bottle in sight. No, it's, 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 all, it's all in the... Uh, it's outside in the car. Well, that's a funny way to take a walk, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Just go and get it. Well, how are the neighbours, Susie? Right. Decent folk? Oh, well, very decent, yes. You know them well? Quite well. Well, it's a good thing to have good neighbours, especially when they're only a wall apart. <laughs> Coming. <laughs> <laughs> Do they always come to dinner when you knock on the wall? <laughs> Sit down, Uncle Jim. George, give me a minute. <laughs> Is anything wrong? No, just looking at you. Well, that's George. I'll get the glasses. Ah, George, you want to watch this wife of yours, you know? Yes. When I banged on the wall just now, a fellow said he'd be straight over. <laughs> oh, yeah, that was some... Um... Oh, old, old, um... <laughs> yes. Uh, what, uh, what would you like to drink? I oh, I'd love a scotch, George, please. A scotch. <laughs> <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Did you get thirsty on the way back from the pub? No, oh, it's, it's a public and a, a, a run a bit short, you see. <laughs> Had to take one off the optic. <laughs> a pub out of scotch. I think somebody's burnt it down to the ground by now, haven't they? Holy smoke! <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen anything like this since the Prohibition. <laughs> Well, th th things, things are a bit uh, different in the country, aren't they, darling? Well, things aren't as bad as this in the Gobi Desert. <laughs> George? Uh, yeah, yes, darling. Excuse, excuse me, Uncle. Yeah. Uh, about the food? You'll have to bring it round here. I can't keep coming through the door like a bloody waiter. <laughs> George! <laughs> I've poured you a drink. I thought you looked as though you needed it. Oh, Thanks well. a lot, Uncle. Well... Here's to you, and here's to your new home. Thank you. Ah! I remember you're a marvellous cook, Susie. Mm? May I see the kitchen? No. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, because it's, uh, it's, it's, it's going to be a surprise, you see. Oh, something special, eh? <laughs> well, it's certainly not giving itself away. <laughs> well, I've got to go out to the car again. <laughs> <laughs> well, Susie... With the exception of the kitchen, will you show me round? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Where does George sleep? Underneath. <laughs> the, um, double bed was so, um... And it's such a small room. Come and see the bathroom. Well, I shall only believe he lives there if I see his razor. <laughs> That'll be George. Don't you give him a door key? <laughs> Your razor's being repaired. <laughs> <laughs> My razor's being repaired. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, well, they do go wrong, don't they? Not like the old um, cutthroats. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> Help yourself to a drink, Uncle Thank Jim. Thank you, Susie. I will. Bedroom. Oh, hell. He was a bit worried about the size of the bed. He must think we're sex maniacs. <laughs> George, where are the saucepans? Look, I've been coming.
going through that door all evening. Can't you do it out, saucepans? Oh, yes, if you like to hold the foot in your fingers over the gas. <laughs> just going out of the car again. The car? Are you sure you haven't got a removal van out there? <laughs> Hello? Who's that? Pardon? Oh, sorry, I thought for a moment it was George. No, it's George's uncle. Do you want George or his wife? His wife? Uncle Jim. Huh? His wife, Susie. But she's not his wife. I mean, I know they haven't got the decree absolute yet. Oh. Decree <laughs> absolute? We get a lot of wrong numbers. <laughs> oh, sorry. Don't uh, you know about the divorce? I think I'll pass you over to the ex-Mrs. Bassett. <laughs> Hello. Hello, Susie. It's June. Susie, have I put my foot in it? Up to the thigh, June. <laughs> I'll ring you back. Susie, I'm an old man from a humble colony, but I've still got a little bit working for me up here. Yes, I know, Uncle Jim. I'm, I'm very sorry. Are you and George divorced? Look, I think George would prefer to tell you about it himself. I'm damn certain he wouldn't. You are divorced and you got back together again tonight in case I changed my mind about the money. Would that be a good Antipodean guess? There's a lot to explain. Well, George, I'd better explain it. And no prompting from you, right? Right. Right. Where, what's he doing at this precise moment, by the way? Getting my pants. <laughs> I've got it from the car. The car? Yes, it's the it's the extra ingredient for the for the mystery meal. The <laughs> evening fair abounds with mystery, George. Yes, it does, doesn't it? Yes. I can't get over that chap next door shouting coming when I banged on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that was comical, wasn't it? Highly comical. Just into the kitchen. I tried to. <laughs> well, perhaps it'll come out over dinner, Susie. I'm not going on with this farce a minute longer. <laughs> Uncle, uh, well, sit down, would you? Uh, something I'd like to say to you. Well, Susie and I are divorced. That may come as a bit of a surprise to you. We, well, near as makes no difference anyway. The fellow who shouted coming next door was me, because I live next door. And uh, I'll, t I'll tell you why, if you promise not to laugh. No. Second thoughts, I'd I rather you did laugh. It might cheer me up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> this has been one of the worst evenings since, since you and I split up. Then why did you split up? You're not just good friends, you know. You're both madly in love with one another. Now, look oh, at Of really course you understand. are. You can see it in your eyes. Just like four spotlights. And if you were to knock a hole in that wall, the Queen's Proctor would come running with a strong case against your illicit cohabitation. Now, I tell you, George, and I tell you, Susie, stop all this nonsense, get your marriage going together again, or I won't leave a penny to either of you there. Now, how about that, eh? I, I never told anyone this before, but uh, your Auntie Pig and I, as near as damn it, landed ourselves in your spot when we were your age. But we came to our senses, and we went back to living together. And the years that followed were the happiest of our whole married life. Understand me? Both of you? Well, there's nothing more to be said. Bye bye, George. Goodbye, Uncle Jim. Thanks a lot. Susie. Bye bye, Uncle Jim. See you sometime. Yes, Keep smiling. Keep in touch. Bye bye. 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 Myself permanent damage falling out of that bed of yours. <laughs> Mine's at least half as big again. My mother told me never to accept beds from strange men. <laughs> <laughs> strange man. 
You know me, I live next door. <laughs> anyway, look, they, they always finish up in the in the fellow's bed in the films. Now that's that's much more romantic. Romantic? What would you know about romance? Upstairs in a passionate clinch, and all you're thinking about is your spinal column. <laughs> <laughs> just just try, man. Come on, give it a try. Is it made? Is it what? Made. <laughs> Look, it won't make a lot of difference one way or another in about five minutes, will it? Well, there's no need to bring it down to barroom vulgarity. Look, are you coming to bloody bed or not? <laughs> bloody not! Cottages, sir? Mm, what? Something you've forgotten. Yes, I did forget something, actually. I forgot that Cupid was a much younger fellow. London, 